Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Amanda Miller. Um, I'm the member relations coordinator here at Grow Nebraska. For any of you who may not be members, um, definitely check out grownebraska.org for um, all of the resources that we have, the other trainings that we have, um, as well as um, what it takes to become a member with us. So we'd love to work with you. Um, today's sponsors are Grow Nebraska, the Grow Nebraska Women's Business Center, Nebraska Enterprise Fund, Nebraska Business Development Center, and Nebraska Prosperity um, as well. So thank you to all of them. And then our co-hosts for today are Jamestown Regional Entrepreneur Center and Beaver Dam Chamber. And then Dave Meyer is our speaker. Um, we actually get to see him every month. So if you love what you hear today, make sure that you um, sign up for future trainings. And then I just wanted to let you guys know about a couple of the trainings that are coming up on grownebraska.org underneath the trainings tab. Um, all of our Google trainings are open to the public. The next one is gonna be on November 2nd and it is digital skills for everyday um, tasks and then October 20th and the 27th are also open to anybody and um, the 20th is are you using Google to fulfill to your fullest potential excuse me and then the 27th is tips and best practices to add value reduce transit times and shipping costs and then the last one is going to be on October 11th and this is for members only um, and it's going to be an open forum with a marketing and advertising expert. So definitely um, sign up for that one if you're a member and you have not, because this is going to be really, really good. This is a good time to um, ask any questions that you have about advertising, marketing. He's done it all. So definitely make sure to sign up for that. Um, and then I will let Dave go ahead and take it away. And thank you so much for being our speaker today. Absolutely. Thanks, Amanda. And thanks to all of our partners. And to all of our attendees today. Without you, this would be very boring. So <laughs> it's delight to have you here. I am going to share my screen because I have a whole bunch that I'd like to share with you. And the topic today, of course, is how to use YouTube to grow your business. This is one of my favorite talks because YouTube is an incredibly, incredibly powerful tool, but a lot of people just don't get it. They don't get how to use it for their business or they overthink it. And so I want to bring that up for everyone. And we're going to share some big topics today. We're going to share how to use YouTube to grow your business and how to shoot great video that's designed to engage your customers. Um, this is something that I'm pretty um, excited about and that I do a lot of. So I would also love to encourage you to please use the Q&A tool to ask questions if you have them live during today's event. And I'll do my best to answer those as we go through. And of course, I'm going to set aside probably the last 10 to 15 minutes to do live questions. So go ahead and store up those questions if you could. All right. So the first thing that I want you to know is uh, how to get a hold of me. And so um, I am your Growth Google trainer for the entire Midwest, covering from Nebraska to Anchorage and uh, and all points all points Alaska, so kind of everything north, um, including Minnesota, which is where I am. And here's how to reach me. And I have a very special request for you. If you learn something that you are going to do differently as a result of today's talk, please share that with me at dave at busyweb.com. I'm only looking for a couple of folks to do this. And, and to share what they're going to do differently. But one of the big things that Google has asked me to do is to share what they're share what people are learning. And so if you could do me a favor and help me out with that, that would be a tremendous help. And again, you can send that to Dave at busyweb.com. Busyweb is my marketing agency that I own uh, out of Minneapolis and super excited to have you here. So that's how you get us. And then if you'd like to share on social media, on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, or Instagram or TikTok, um, go ahead and share that at the pound sign grow with Google at the hashtag grow with Google. All of that said, let's get down to business. When people think of video, they just think of YouTube. YouTube is absolutely where people watch. In 2018, people spent more than 250 million 
hours per day watching YouTube. And that has gone up much more than that. As a matter of fact, right now we're estimating that people watch over a billion hours of video per day and that there are more than 2 billion monthly logged in users across the YouTube platform. That's uh, almost a third of the entire world. YouTube is where people discover things, of course. By search volume, YouTube is actually the second largest search engine in the world over and above all of the other search engines other than Google. And of course, Google is the largest search engine. 85% of viewers turn to YouTube for fresh content about things that they're interested in. And that leads me to where YouTube is for engagement. 70% of shoppers say that they purchased from a brand after seeing that brand on YouTube. People do research before they buy. People want to experience and see things. I'm going to guess if you've made any big purchases, certainly online in the world, um, you've done some video research. And most of the time, people post that stuff on YouTube. It is just an easy to use platform that keeps things very simple. And of course, to post things on YouTube is completely free. So let's show you how to get the most out of that program. In today's workshop, I'm going to cover the following things. First, we're going to set you up with a YouTube channel. So if you don't already have your channel and you want to learn how to create content and publish, you do need to have a home page on YouTube, and that's your channel. Then we're going to show you how to add great videos and use that channel to post those videos, and then also how you can embed and share those videos in other places. Then if you want to reach exactly the right people at exactly the right time with exactly the right video content, I'm going to show you how to do that using video ads. We're going to wrap everything up with a few resources and some additional links. So let's get started. The entire world of YouTube starts by creating your YouTube channel. What's a channel? It's really your home. And if you think of it kind of in old school TV terms, your YouTube channel is, you know, number channel number four on the dial. It's your place where people can sign in to view all of the content that you make available to your customers, to your fans, to people that you work with. It's probably going to be easiest to set up your YouTube channel on a desktop or laptop computer rather than on a mobile device. In order to get there, I've highlighted the sign in button in the upper right. It doesn't actually look on like this. I've zoomed in on it a little bit so that it's easier to see. But on YouTube, you'll simply click sign in and you're going to click create account and then for myself or to manage my business. Remember that you do need a Google account to sign into YouTube. Google accounts work across all Google products, Gmail, Google Drive, Google Maps, um, your email if you use Gmail, that kind of stuff as well, um, and much more. You want to use a Google account, could be your email address for your work or a Gmail account. You wanna use something that you're going to check often because when people comment or when Google and YouTube have updates for you, they're going to send you things to that email address. So when you sign up and use that account, make sure that you check it often. After signing up for YouTube, signing into your Google account for any other product, will also automatically sign you into YouTube. Simply going to youtube.com after you're signed in, we'll get you right into the edit screens and all of the things that you need to do to keep your channel up to date. When you sign up your channel for the very first time, you're going to click sign in and then you're going to click the circle in the top right corner. This is your profile photo, or if you didn't select a custom photo already, it's going to be your initial. This is going to reveal a quick drop down menu. And again, I've highlighted that here. So you're going to go down to create a channel. You'll see that dialog box. You're going to select it. And then you simply click the button down on that page after you enter in your business name to create the channel. The easy part's done. Now we're going to skip up to the next step. And what you'll do then is simply go to your home screen and click things up in order to customize. So you're going to edit your channel by clicking the big blue customize channel button. It's in the upper right hand corner. Again, it's zoomed in here. And then if you do, or if you are ready to already upload some videos, there's also a button right there that again, I've zoomed in on that lets you upload those videos. 
but you probably want to have a little bit more context. And we're trying to make our channel as useful and as informative and as welcoming as possible for people that are joining and checking us out for the first time. And so you're going to want to dig a little deeper. The best way to do that is to use YouTube Studio. When you go into YouTube Studio, you're simply going to click Customize Channel, and then it's going to take you through a number of steps inside of the studio to grow and build your YouTube assets. Studio, incidentally, is also where you're going to edit your videos, to update your branding, to add additional videos if you want. You can manage playlists or edit subtitles or add different cards to the back of your content and much more. After closing the welcome dialog box, after you get into Studio, you're going to see the customization tab that I've highlighted here in the upper left of the top part of the YouTube Studio screen. There are three subsections of the customization tab. There's layout, branding, and basic information. The first section, layout, helps you customize the content on the channel's homepage. First, you have the option to add a video spotlight. This video appears at the top of the channel homepage. You can choose two types of videos. For videos who are not yet subscribers, you can add a channel trailer. Think of this like a quick video that highlights who you are as an organization, what you create, what viewers can expect from your channel, and encourage people to subscribe. Check out more. Here's our channel. Here's some things that we do. For videos who already, or for visitors who already subscribed, you can showcase any of your existing videos. So come on back. I know you're already a subscriber and we've got this new content that is amazing and you've never seen it before because it's a brand new thing that we're doing or whatever. The video won't be shown again at the top of the page for subscribers who have already watched that video. So you can think of it as a secondary teaser trailer for people that already know you. Next, you can also manage sections. Sections allow you to customize what viewers see when they land on your channel's homepage. They're made up of videos and playlists, and they help you organize and showcase content from your channel. You can choose up to 12 sections to include on your homepage, and you can order them however you like. You can organize and promote content that you want to highlight on your channel using those channel sections. A section lets you group videos together to help your audience make decisions about what to watch next. Next, the branding tab will help you identify branding elements, set your ID, set your picture, and to make sure that you're consistently branded across all of your networks and connections. First, you can add that profile picture. Your profile will appear wherever your channel is represented on YouTube, like next to your videos, your comments, and your search results. Next, you can add a channel banner image. This appears across the top of your channel and can give viewers a visual sense of you and your content. Make sure to follow the image size requirements. And as a pro tip, make sure that you keep your logo or the most important part of your banner image in the very center of that banner because it expands whether you're on a big screen TV, on a computer screen, on a laptop, or even on a four inch phone. Finally, if you want to add a video watermark, it can appear on your videos in the bottom right-hand corner of that player, and viewers can use it to subscribe to your channel. You can choose between when the watermark shows up during your videos, at the end, at a custom start time, or throughout the entire video. To add a watermark, you scroll down to the video watermark section, click upload, and choose an image that meets the listed requirements. Once you upload, you click the options from when you'd like your watermark to be displayed and click publish. Um, Vaughn has a fantastic question. He asks, are there SEO things that need to be considered with YouTube? There absolutely is. And I'm going to include a few of those when we get into the video uploading section. So great question, Vaughn. And for everyone watching, please feel free to ask us those questions as we're going through today's event. This is your time to learn how to use YouTube. So if you have something that you've always wanted to ask, even if you were afraid to ask it, go ahead and ask it now. All right. So you've uploaded your branding. You've got your great video um, screen, you've got your ID and your brand and your banner image. Now you want to go into the information. It's actually a great lead in to what Vaughn was asking about SEO. The basic information tab lets you edit your channel's name, 
add a channel description, which is very important for getting found or for optimization on search engine, and you add translations for your channel name and descriptions in other languages if you'd like to. You can add links to sites that you want to share with your viewers, perhaps your business's homepage or your Google business profile, and the place that you can add for contact information in case you want people to email you with business inquiries. Once you make changes to any of those tabs, you click the publish button, which in here is in gray in the upper right. It's gray because I haven't made any changes. Once you do make changes to this page, you'll actually see the publish button turn blue, and then you can click it to make those changes. Now I'm going to defer or branch out a little bit from what um, this content says, because I'm going to show you this channel as a customization, but I'm also going to show you a live YouTube channel because I think it's funner and more interesting to share up and down across a real channel. In this instance, DIY Creators has a nice banner image, you know, right across the top. And note that the banner image has mo the most important content in the middle because on a phone, especially if you're holding the phone in portrait mode or upright, you're only going to be able to see the middle of that banner image. The profile picture, in this case, it has a little bit of text on it and a picture of the DIY creator's host. And they post that up. It's important to note that if you have a very horizontal logo, you're going to want to come up with something that fits in a nice little circle. Because if it's too far out, like from a small screen from a ways away, or especially on a phone, you probably wouldn't be able to read that DIY creator's logo. And so instead, I would encourage you to have something square. Um, like, for example, with BusyWeb, my logo, um, which you can kind of see behind my hand right here, um, is kind of broad, or the Grow with Google logo behind me right now um, is kind of wide. So you want to have a square version of that logo. And this is also where you can identify your video spotlight. In this case, this is for people that haven't yet subscribed. And so this is the video that shows up for folks that haven't subscribed. Once you do subscribe, you can have a teaser channel video that is only available to subscribers until they've watched that. Now I'm going to switch over to, well, actually one more screen on here because I want to show you the sections as are shown on this page. And then I'm going to show you a different company's page as well. So sections, again, are pieces of content that lets you kind of organize what you do into different sections. So in our case with DIY creators, they have DIY build and furniture. And this is a playlist of those videos that match that content. You can also see concrete um, builds here and then other things. And I wanna show you a little bit more. So I'm gonna skip over and I'm gonna click here and then I'm going to go here into the busy web channel. So across here, again, I have my logo and you can see it since my logo is kind of broad and horizontal, I just have our mascot buzz in that video um, or in that icon. And then I have our tagline up at the top on here inside of the customized channel. And then I have my sections. My first one is our monthly busy webinars. There are timely trainings and ideas for marketing and sales. Then I have playlists. Then I have older webinars, popular uploads. I have featured channels. So if you have another channel for your business that you feature, you can also list back to this. This is some of my personal stuff. And then if you have any shorts on your videos or in your YouTube channel, which I'm gonna be talking about in a minute, you can also preview shorts from this homepage on the channel. Now, since I am logged in as the channel owner, I can see this customized channel or manage video section. If I go into either of these, if I go into customized channel, it'll take me right to the content that I was sharing with you just a little bit ago. There's layout, branding, and basic information. So the layout information, that's the channel trailer for people who haven't subscribed. If I wanted to have a featured video for returning subscribers, which is something that I probably should do, um, I'm going to add that up. And this is how featured sections show up. So I can add a section up to 12. And sections include playlists, created playlists, popular uploads, featured channels, um, short videos. And you can edit or remove sections by clicking on those on the three dots over on the right and going from there. 
branding, as you can see, you can change or update your content. You can see your banner image and it gives you overviews on what you should have in your content and then also video watermarks. So displaying it at the end of the video, if I wanted to show up on the entire video, I can click that. And then once I'm done, that publish button is the important thing to remember because when you click publish, it saves your content for later. Again, it turned blue as soon as I changed something. I can't click on it right now because I haven't made any changes. And so my publish button is grayed out. Basic information is where you're going to enter in your description for your business or for your channel. And you want to have these be keyword rich. So you want to include keywords for people that are searching for your kind of business. So videos and trainings provided by BusyWeb. We host webinars on online marketing, web design, social media, and much more. And you can find more here and blah, blah, blah. So here's your channel URL and your custom URL. As soon as you have more than 100 subscribers, you can create a custom URL. So if you go to youtube.com slash busyweb, you don't actually even need the C. But if you go to youtube.com slash busyweb, you can see this channel in all its glory. You can add specific links. Again, I have links to events to our Twitter account and to our busy webinar archive. And then I can have the first four links included. And there's a contact information um, link right there as well. So that's how that stuff works. Let's skip back over to our regularly scheduled program because now I wanna show you how to create and add videos to your channel. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about SEO comments and how to make sure that you show up. So keep that in mind. But as we get started, I want to do a little bit uh, to demystify creating videos on YouTube. We all have fantastic video tools in our pocket. We all have wonderful content and wonderful things that we can share just by grabbing our high definition phones, hitting record and sharing thoughts and content. YouTube isn't a platform where only the huge brands with millions of dollars to create super fancy videos can play. Authentic video that tells your story goes a long way if you put it in front of the right people. In fact, 91% of small businesses are very or somewhat confident in the videos that they're creating. Before you make your first video, you just want to think about what you're trying to do with this video content. You know, if a picture is worth a thousand words, um, video is 30 pictures per second, right? 30 frames per second. So what kind of story can you tell with all of that visual power? Don't overthink it. Sometimes you can just share the process of your service. You know, what goes into making or building your product or who are the people that work for you or that they're going to experience. I actually have a video series on YouTube of introductions to every member of my team that someone is going to be working with. And we just send that out in an email saying, here, meet the team. And it's all 30 second videos. You know, hi, I'm Jenny. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Larry. And here's what I do and how you're going to connect with me. Here's what you need to know. And so when you build that, what makes you stand out? You might have interesting products or services. Doing an unboxing video could be super fun. Doing how-to videos. You know, like plumbing companies have a lot of leeway and feedback where they'll actually get great interactions just showing people how to DIY stuff that they'd prefer not to do themselves. So if you don't want to deal with doing service calls for leaky faucets, doing a quick video on how to fix a leaky faucet does two things. It makes you the professional that people go to when they have additional issues, or it also removes that kind of service from your needs. You don't have to take a service call and charge them $100 just to fix a leaky, fa a leaky faucet. Instead, maybe somebody will try it and they'll decide halfway in that you know this is more than I want to take on, or maybe they might break something and so they need to get more help. So it can be a good production on your um, additional help with your videos. The last thing to think about is who the star is of your video. And if you have a CEO or a president or an owner of your company, the temptation is always to have that person be the video star. 
But if that person isn't really all that dynamic, if they tend to speak in monotone and ver or very quiet, or if they're just not comfortable in front of a camera, it's probably not the right person. So think of someone that can be interactive and engaged and that can speak clearly and that can inflect and change tone and keep it interesting in order to be a great star for your content. Now, we partnered with a YouTube or YouTube partnered with a research company to analyze a whole bunch of video ads from small and medium businesses across the US, Canada and Australia. They analyzed what worked best for ads and get to give you some ideas on the kinds of content that you can shape or plan for creating effective videos. Again, these are tips and they're focused on ads, but we can extrapolate this pretty well into all kinds of content. There are three story types that they identified. Again, and these are on the micro level, so you can also expand them out into full form for straight up videos. So there's the business story, the product or service story, and the promotional story. Business stories are short. And again, on the ad length, they're super short, recommended length, 30 to 60 seconds. You should just share who you are, what you do, and why you do it. The product or service story, should explain the benefits of your product, get into the details of how your product or service works and cover the problems that you address. If there's some interesting way that a customer of yours has used your product or if they saw exemplary results in some way, ask them if you can shoot a quick video testimonial and share that out to your customer base. And promotional stories, these are special deals, or timely information that you want your customers or videos, or video viewers to know about. And this can help get out the word. This is a little bit tricky because you wanna be very careful on how things work and what you're doing for special outreach. And so if you are too promotional all the time, your video is probably gonna fall flat. And so you need to mix it up and share all three of these, the business story, the product or service story, and the promotional story at regular intervals. And for best search engine results, you want to have the description of what you're doing and the product or service and your business in that video description, and ideally also in the title of that video. As best practices, make sure that you just have a very clear and concise message about your business and that you put it down on paper somehow. I like to have a very clear script, five or six bullet points of what I want to share. You want to have a very strong impression right at the beginning. If you have a dramatic video that you've spent, you know, $10,000 on to have James Earl Jones do a amazing voiceover, understand a couple of things. First, a lot of times people aren't even viewing videos with the audio on because maybe they're just sitting in line at a store or maybe they're next to their spouse or significant other um, at night but right before they fall asleep and just watching video for the scroll of it. If you fade up from black, all people see is this black box and they're, no, they're not going to hear anything in that case if they don't have audio on. So they're going to skip it. So make sure that you have something interesting and informative and engaging right away. A lot of times people will put little trailers in on like a little teaser of the most interesting thing that happened in that video. It might be a quick cut of your customer or your testimonial saying, this was the best thing that happened to me all week or whatever, right? The key is to have a compelling call to action or timely offer as part of what you want people to do next. That can be included in a card at the end of the video. And I'm gonna talk about that in a couple of seconds but always leave people with something to do next. Not always promotional. Remember, promotional was only a third of what we want to do, but having something that they can do, click here to subscribe more, click here for more tips. You know, Don't forget to reach out or give us a call. Stop by next Tuesday, whatever that is. Um, we have someone that just asked, how do we get our videos to show up on YouTube as an ad in the middle of vodcasts? Perfect, I am going to cover advertising in a couple of minutes. So hang on for that. Um, as if you're watching a particular podcast or vodcast about cooking, and then you see a local ad pop up, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Great question. Thank you. 
After examining your videos, researchers identified the following common creative techniques. So we had this again through that group. And then these are tips, not necessarily hard and fast rules. First, I want to start with the selfie video. That's literally people grabbing their phone, popping it up in front of them and saying, hey, it's Dave. And I'm talking to you today about this thing. Um, you saw an example of that in my um, short that I shot. And I'll, I'll show you an example of that in a minute again. Um, having a perfect backdrop. You know, notice on my video, and if I stopped sharing right now, you would see the um, background. Actually, I will just quickly. Um, so if you stop sharing, you can see my background. I've taken care to clear off my desk. And there are hints and tips of who I am and what I'm talking about. There's the Grow With Google logo and the other things that I do. I'm wearing my Grow With Google shirt. All of that is intended to engage and connect you with the audience and with the content that I'm sharing. I've got the, got the Grow With Google logo right here. So all of that is intended to make your life as easy as possible as a viewer. Take some time. You would be, you wouldn't be amazed, but I'm sometimes amazed at the crud that people have in the backgrounds of their videos. You know, clean up your room, clean up your office. You know, if you're shooting in front of a busy highway, you're going to have that distracting you, but it's also going to be really noisy, um, which leads me into my next technique. If you do have a noisy thing that you're video videoing, sometimes have a voiceover or narrating your video with an off-screen voice can be very helpful. Um, this is sort of voiceover, this presentation right now. Um, it can cover product benefits, unique features, and much more. And you can film the video yourself, do stock video, or even a montage of photos and simply talk about them as you go. Um, next is top down. Top down shots can have the illusion of tactile sensation. Um, you see this a lot with cooking videos where people are creating things and they have their phone up above the screen and they're just shooting straight down as they're preparing things. Um, point and shoot videos are really handy if you need action. There's some great new tools, um, some of the new like um, Android and Apple devices. You can actually run around with those devices and it smooths out the video. So it looks like you're using a Steadicam. It's pretty amazing, which leads me to action. Make sure that you have some sort of movement and connection, ideally, inside of all of your videos. Note that I'm not just sitting at this screen and droning on. You wouldn't be with me still if I was. So sharing things and having action both in your voice and in the background can be very helpful. There's a reason why I have this little screen and it kind of rotates around. It's just to give a little bit more visual interest and share common themes. You can tell things with text. Um, a lot of videos are doing this now. It's pretty easy with a video editing program to just add specific text or captions. Having auto-generated captions can be incredibly helpful. Or even doing animation and motion graphics. Having content or techniques that are illustrated can take very engaging content and make it kind of accessible. And there's some artificial intelligence or very inexpensive tools that you can use to create your own animations. For more tips, go to youtube.com slash ads slash video creation tips. People ask me a lot about when to, what they need to do for shooting their video. And there's three things that I wanna cover. I already talked about space a little bit, but again, make sure that you're free of clutter. Make sure that you're thinking visually. If you have a great video or a great um, product or service, say you're a landscape architect and you're interviewing a happy customer, interview that customer in front of the actual landscape that you help them with. Seems obvious in hindsight, but think visually at all times. Lighting, um, you can't see it from here, but I have, I'm facing a window right off screen right here you can kind of see my hand glow a little bit i have nice natural diffuse light that's coming at me you want to have a light source that is behind your camera and illuminating you if the camera was behind me and shooting towards the camera i would be washed out or i would look like i was in the witness protection program if you have bad lighting, or if you have harsh bright lighting on one side and dimmer lighting or no lighting on the other, 
you can look kind of um, like you're in a in a psycho thriller or something, right? Where it's like super dynamic lighting. And I actually have a big big light off camera that I will turn on right now to even things out. And so if it was super sunny out, it's not very sunny right now in Minneapolis, but if I did have very bright light coming in, I would have both sides lit up. And so you wanna think about that. And then for sound, we all have fantastic cameras that we can use, but the problem that a lot of amateur video sees is when sound isn't thought about. If you have your phone and you're shooting from all the way across the room, or you can hear me as I back away from the screen, the further you are away from the microphone, the more echo and feedback that microphone picks up. So you need to have a really good time or a, a good spatial relationship between the sound that's being produced between the speaker and the computer. So especially if you're doing something on a laptop, I would recommend getting a microphone. You'll note when I get nice and close to the microphone, I don't have to speak as loud for one, but all of the echo goes away. And I'm focusing on having a good balance between video and audio. So I have my microphone about nine inches from my face, just off screen. Um, you can pick up lavalier microphones that will plug into your phone and you can keep on and clip onto your shirt right under your chin. That does a world of difference between the just standard having your phone out, especially if you're shooting from across a room. So use a microphone, record and listen back to see how you sound. And again, speak confidently. You need to think about how you're talking. A lot of amateur video will include a lot of ums and ahs and uh, um, if you, and I just did it right there. If you take some time and just think about it, you can just pause in those spaces instead of including those interjections. That makes you sound a lot smarter and a lot more confident. Also think about the inflection of your voice. You wanna speed up and slow down and talk louder and quieter and inflect up and inflect down. If you keep it interesting and engaging, you're much more likely to keep your customer your intended audience engage the entire video through. If you do need music or sound effects, that can actually make a huge benefit as well. And there's an entire audio library that's available for free inside of YouTube's Studio Audio Library. So if you go to the audio library, these are all royalty-free and commission-free audio that you can add. So if you wanna have a little bit of a intro music into the beginning of your video, or just have some ambient music in the background to make it a little, a little bit lighter and airier as you're talking. Easy to do, completely free inside of YouTube. And you can actually make the volume go up so that it has a crescendo and then it goes back down and you can build that video and just play with it a little bit because it's free and super easy. Okay, your video's done, you're delighted with it. Now it's time to add it to your channel. This is where our SEO stuff comes in. If you're in YouTube Studio, you're going to click Create in the upper left-hand side of the screen, or in the very upper right, there's a button that I've highlighted here that says Create with a little camera icon, and then you can either upload videos or go live. Um, quick aside, if you are planning to go live, you need to create and try the go live at least 24 hours in advance of your first live video. And then after that, there's no preamble. You can just go live whenever you want. But build that up and make sure that you try it. But from the drop down, you're gonna select either a file or you can record right off of your camera on your laptop if that's what you're shooting from. Once your video is in, it's important to complete all of the information in the detail screen. This is where the search engine optimization comes in real handy. Having the right title um, is important and it's super informative. It should give great detail. Something like fourth quarter newsletter won't mean anything to your potential viewers and nobody in their right mind would listen to that. Add a description and a title that includes the keywords that people would be looking for if we were our plumber that was sharing 
tips on how to fix a leaky faucet, I would say leaky faucet tips. And even if you have a specific brand that you're trying to get found for, or that you know that a lot of your customers are using, fixing a leaky Moen faucet, for example, could be very good for search engine optimization. Inside of that description, you can add additional keywords. You know, it's not a hard and fast rule, and it's not like loading keywords is going to help you in a dramatic way. But the more people find your content, YouTube and Google use the content in the description and title as an indicator on what's in that video. So make sure that you put that in there. And then you want to add additional links or additional cards to help you get found. And then make sure that you're using that content effectively. When you publish your video, YouTube is automatically going to pull three screenshots from that video and let you select those as potential thumbnails. If you don't like any of them and there's a solid shot that you're not going to because it's just random pulls from your video, you can also upload your own graphic file. Start looking at other YouTube channels that you like and that maybe are doing similar things to what you're doing and take some lessons from them. They probably have big, bold lettering. They probably have a interesting call to action right in that video thumbnail. And they're definitely not boring. You want to stand out in a sea of other video thumbnails and let people know. You're going to also add a bit more information, like if you're adding your video to a playlist, you can define your audience. You need to do some special things if your video is made for kids. And Google walks you through that inside of the platform. You need to say if your video is a paid promotion. If you're enabling automatic chapters to make your video easier to watch, you simply select that. You can add tags, which are descriptive keywords that can be useful if the content of your video is commonly misspelled. Otherwise, especially tags don't play a huge role in your video's discovery or your search engine optimization. So it's mostly titles and descriptions. Language and caption certification, recording and date, recording date and location, license and distribution information, Shorts sampling lets you control whether or not other people are allowed to create YouTube shorts. I'm going to talk more about that in a second. And category lets you select the category of your video. Is it education? Is it comedy? Is it music? Whatever. <laughs> Finally, comments and ratings lets you choose whether viewers can leave comments on your video and whether viewers can see how many likes or dislikes there are on your video. After adding those de details, you can add end screens or cards. End screens can be added to the last five to 20 seconds of your video. You can use them to promote other videos, encourage viewers to subscribe, and much more. Note, your video has to be at least 25 seconds long to get an end screen. You can use cards to make your videos more interactive. Cards have polls, links to other channels, and more, and there's a bunch of preset templates in cards when you want to create some. You don't have to add either of these two elements, but they can often result in additional connectivity and additional views and shares. The next step in uploading is called checks. You can use the checks page to screen your video for copyright claims. If a John Cougar Mellencamp song is playing in the background, Google might um, pop that and you might need to alter your audio so that you don't get hit with a content claim or a copyright claim. This lets you fix your video if issues are found before that video goes live. The add suitability check also allows you to request human review if you think systems have made a mistake about the suitability of that video for an ad. And that helps you learn about potential restrictions so that you can manage them before publishing. Next, you're gonna choose what the visibility of that video is. There's three options here. Public videos are the most popular, for a reason, if you're uploading to YouTube, you probably want people to watch it. So having a public video is the default choice and the one that I recommend most often. Unlisted videos can be seen and shared by anyone with a link, but they don't show up in search. These are useful for videos that perhaps you're sharing a webinar that you only want attendees to see. You would simply mail them the link and then they could view it or private videos and playlists can only be seen by you and the people that you specifically choose. You add their email address, they receive the email, and they need to click that link in order to see it. 
as a note, always assume that any content that you're sharing on any video platform can be made public. So don't ever share any sensitive information, any passwords, anything from your customers that you don't want to potentially go public um, because people could just screen share or even if they wanted to, they could hold up their phone and shoot a recording of them watching that video and republish it. So always assume that your content could be made public even if you try to list unlisted or private videos. Once your video is published, if you want it to be public, of course, spread the word. You can share your video on a variety of social sites, via email, on a website, and much more. Be proactive about letting people know about your video. In HubSpot, CMS, the website builder, or on WordPress, all you need to do is grab the YouTube video link, in this case, that u2.be slash blah, blah, blah. You copy that, you paste it into WordPress or YouTube or HubSpot, and it automatically creates a little player. Super easy, keeps it engaging. The other thing that I talked about a little bit ago is shorts. It's a fantastic new way to watch and create short videos, 60 seconds or less using nothing but your phone. You can also upload shorts using the computer and you simply have to add the hashtag or pound shorts to the end of that video. And again, that video needs to be 60 seconds or less. You get a little bit more options on audio. There's an entire audio library that you can choose for a song or audio clip. And again, the audio library is free to use, but only for personal non-commercial use unless you hold the appropriate licenses. So be careful on that. If you don't see the option to create a short, just go to update your YouTube app on your phone and or you can do it live from any screen by, just by using the hashtag shorts in your video's title or description to help the system recommend your shorts across YouTube. Whether you're just starting out or looking for ways to improve your channel, the Creator Academy can help with free online education about YouTube. So go ahead and check that out at creatoracademy.youtube.com. We're about to enter into our last section, and that's to talk about how to promote your business with video ads. So in order to do that, I wanna give folks just a second to ask additional questions about creating your channel or uploading videos. So if you have specific questions, please use the Q&A tool to do that and or we'll wait until the end. So while we get started right now, I am going to show you a quick video from Two Lanes Closet. Actually, with um, we, we should be okay, but Amanda, if you see this and if the audio is coming back weird, um, let me know. I am going to share this and hopefully the audio will work. <laughs> Normally after a surgical procedure, pets typically go home with what's called a cone or an e-collar. My name is Stephanie Seiberg and I am the owner and developer of Tulane's Closet. When I was in veterinary medicine, I had a lot of clients come and ask if there was something else out there that they could use. And that's how it kind of got started. I had an idea. It's a one-piece post surgical pet garment. The advantages of the Cover Me by Chewy is that they can eat, sleep a lot easier than wearing a cone. They can actually get through the doggy door. They can relax comfortably. Video can show people what it's made out of, how to put it on, how easy it is to use the potty cover. <laughs> YouTube is great for people that are just starting a new business or small business owners like myself because we're all on a budget. As you see that business is growing, you can always add to that at any time. We have doubled almost every year since we started in 2013. There's so many people now that really consider their pet their family and they want them to be comfortable. I think a lot of dogs are a lot happier right now. <laughs> So that's probably a good overview on what you can do with YouTube ads. And so I wanna go into a little bit on how you can use ads to optimize and how to maximize your budget. Um, Jamie did ask a quick question and I wanna take that for you in a minute. And um, actually for you, Jamie, we're probably gonna to wanna to follow up afterwards because I wanna know what's, what happens inside of your specific question. So hold on and we'll take that for the SEO question on optimization. 
The short answer is using YouTube for SEO is absolutely helpful. And I think that what you're talking about is Google business profiles. And so we'll cover that in a minute. All right. So if you are interested in advertising your business on YouTube, the best thing to do is just to go to youtube.com slash ads and use those ads to connect with people who matter to you. Note that you're only paying when people watch your ad, depending on the ad that you choose, you only pay when someone watches 30 seconds or clicks on your ad in stream. And you can see what you're doing and what to improve. So it gives you real-time insights about how people are responding to your videos, including, of course, that ad. There's formats for all attention spans. Little bitty bumper ads are six seconds or less. You can't skip them, so you would be paying for every ad. But they're super cheap and easy, and they work very well. Um, you can do non-skippable in-stream ads. Those as you would as you would imagine, um, aren't skippable, but they're 15 seconds or less. And so you would make sure that people see that. Outstream ads show on partner sites, and those are available on mobile devices and tablets. And that's what our anonymous attendee asked about, um, about cooking, and then you see a local ad pop up. That would be your outstream ads that show up on the YouTube network. And then video discovery ads appear only on YouTube, and those are when you search on YouTube the discovery ad would show up in the upper right and you would be able to click on that ad for more info. And then of course, in-stream ads, the most popular kinds run before, during, or after other videos on YouTube, on the display network, games, or apps. Ads may run on YouTube videos embedded on other websites. And after five seconds on in-stream ads, the viewer can skip that ad. If they do skip it, you don't pay. Now bumpers, you can tell us quick six second story. What I like to do, especially with these, is remind people about other longer content that I've posted. This might be a promotion for a specific video or a link to another ad. Um, people always rec rem remember these or often remember these. Make sure that you include your brand inside of that content to make it as useful and as helpful as possible. Skippable in-stream ads, this is the most popular kind. After five seconds, the viewer has the ability to skip. And again, make sure that you have your brand and a call to action in the first five seconds to get the most bang for your buck. You want people to respond and to see your name and information. So don't pay for a 30 second ad or a five second uh, when you can get that first five seconds for free. You can have companion banners on your advertisements. And so if you build those in, that'll show up in the upper right of your video if they're watching it on YouTube. And that link will show even after that ad has played while people are watching the rest of that content. So if they're watching that cooking video, your ad logo will show up in the upper right. And so you can have a little promotion that people can follow while they're watching that video content. Super helpful and super interesting. It's a great way to reach exactly the right people at exactly the right time. Again, you're doing exactly the same thing you are reaching out to people to give them the good content that they're looking for. You want to be helpful. You want to be informative. You want to be descriptive and give people what they want. As a recap, because we're almost at the end of our time. Again, if you have specific questions, again, go ahead and reach out to me with that. Would love to give you as much help as I can get you. I'm pulling my microphone in a little bit here because, of course, I'm shooting a video live with you right now in our um, lawn service is out in front of our office right now. So as next steps, make sure that you take time to create a channel that is thoughtful, that is helpful, and that speaks to the needs of your actual customer. Create your channel up and don't forget to fill out all of the information, the description, the channel banner, the logo, and all of the other things that go into that. As you create and upload videos, remember to think about your lighting, remember to think about your backgrounds, remember to tell a short and concise story, and remember to keep your audio nice and close to your mouth so that you sound professional. And then remember that there are additional resources and other ways to help, and so I'm going to share a couple of those now. If you'd like to work with a trusted creative partner, you can follow the link on screen, youtube.com slash ads slash making a video ad. 
that links to a page that shows you a little bit about the official partner program and will link you to people that can help you create professional ads if you need it. There's lots more information at youtube.com slash grow with Google. You'll actually see some of my content on those pages as I, on occasion, author videos for YouTube on that channel. And then if you're looking to start a new career or land a competitively paid job or other things, you can get a Google certificate. Now, Google certificates are available to employers. These are completely free certificate programs that are about the equivalent of a college class. So you can use this and it's actually, you can subscribe and some businesses are actually hiring people with these certificates. There are classes in data analytics, digital marketing and e-commerce, IT, project management, and UX design. So lots and lots of helpful information out there, all free at grow.google slash certificates. There's lots of other online training at google.com slash grow. Whether you're a job seeker, business, a local teacher, or even a developer, there's lots of information out there for you. I want to stop here and do a little bit of Q&A. So Jamie asked, I have a couple of businesses with similar services. So Google has given them some, some issues. So there's some SEO stuff. The postcard, I would recommend resubmitting that postcard. And again, at the beginning of our presentation today, I gave you my email address. Go ahead and reach out to me for that. And let's see what's happening inside of that because I think I need a little bit more detail on how that works. The short answer is YouTube is a fantastic tool for search engine optimization or for getting found. The way to do that is to publish clear, concise videos that have keywords in the description and the titles and that you include and embed to other pages on your website that you wanna rank for. So link to your services page if you wanna get found on that service that you highlight. The business profile page, which is what I think you're looking for, is a slightly different thing and that it helps you show up on Google search and maps. And so I'd love to help you and talk about that, but send me an email at davidbusyweb.com. And also remember for everyone that attended today, if you would please send me one thing that you learned or that you're going to do differently as a result of today's talk. I share that feedback with Google and we use that to improve our content and our presentations. Thanks again to Grow Nebraska and all of our sponsors today. Had such a great time presenting with you. Can't wait to see you on November 2nd for the job search tools. And Amanda, if there's anything else that you'd like to share, have at it. Nope, just uh, make sure that you go check out grownebraska.org underneath the trainings tab for the ones that are coming up. Um, November Google training is also up there. So go check out what's there and let us know if you have any questions. Have a great day, guys. Thanks, everyone. Take care.